Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 351, the Snowstorm Saturday edition. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm George Conger. Today is December 9th, 2017. Welcome to the east coast of America, where the whole coast, north to south, is experiencing the snowstorm of the century, or that's what they would have you believe if you watch the Weather Channel, where they have uh, their little reporters stationed up and down the coast, watching the waves and the snow come down. Um, that's just news today, uh, 24-7. They got to get you to watch. Um, I see a couple flurries. Another oversold snowstorm. George, what's the weather down there in Florida? Well, it did drop about 30 degrees. It dropped from the 80s to the uh, 50s and supposed to go down to almost freezing tonight because we're getting here in northern Florida the tail, the southern tip of that snowstorm. Mm -hmm. So they're forecasting there could be snow from Jacksonville over to Tallahassee, but probably not down here. Yeah, well, our friends from San Antonio were posting on Facebook all these wonderful uh, Christmas weatherly uh, pictures. It was kind of neat. So um, at least the first snowstorm of the season was was big. But uh, right now it's a dud in Connecticut, which is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, special kudos and uh, woohoos to my daughter, uh, Michaela, who got her driver's license. Uh, she's 20 and finally said, Dad, it's time. I'm, I'm going to graduate soon and I need to get a license. Uh, here on the East Coast, uh, uh, millennials don't get licenses as fast as they do in, in the boondocks of Alabama uh, because everything's so close. If they really need to go somewhere, they can take an Uber or a bus or a taxi. And uh, I have friends of friends of friends who are my age whose kids just aren't getting driver's licenses. Um, I'm betting it's a little different down there in Florida. Oh, we have car culture down here, Kevin. Um, law great distances uh, mm -hmm. most of the you know as i drive here from my home in the mornings uh, i pass more cows than people fields and uh, agricultural uh, farms so uh, aut automobile uh, biking is for uh, retirees uh, who want to be healthy uh, it's not a mode of transportation <laughs> yeah. well uh, here on the east coast i mean i'm in uh, about a mile away from the train station. Uh, the train is an hour to New York City. Uh, it's an hour, 20 minutes to Boston. You can get places without having a driver's license here. And my dear daughter, Michaela, for many years said that's what she wanted to do. And teaching a kid to drive on the East Coast, on the 95 corridor, on the Merritt Parkway, uh, is not the optimum training uh driving preparation for what it's like in the real world um, it's dangerous out there and kids freak out when they have to merge with another forty thousand cars and it's it's well, not Kevin, that fun michaela's talk from time to time about moving down to orlando and sure. getting a job in the disney megaplex and if she moves to florida she's going to have some new uh, trials which is how to avoid the armadillo in the road mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's right. uh uh, driving on 95 and seeing an alligator sunning itself by the side of the highway. They're different things down here. Than Much different down there, yeah. Here it's how to avoid the six-car pileup by taking alternative routes. Yeah, it's much different. Let's move on a little bit to the news. Um, the first story we're going to talk about is not traditionally Anglican, but it has the Anglican feel because people want to change what Jesus said. That's that's Episcopal 101. That's the new Church of England 101. It's also Pope Francis 101. If you've been following the news, you've been reading sex stories, uh, West Coast Fire sex stories. But if you go far enough into the New York Times, get Some to section... Some of our viewers only read sex <laughs> that's stories. Right. That's right. Sex story. <laughs> if you get to section four, page eight, you're going to see... Pope Francis wants to change the Lord's Prayer. He wants to take the red letters and change what they mean. And I said, George, we need to talk about this um, because he's going to change red letters. That's important. Is this a, a throwback from Vatican II? We need to talk about it. But then I remember, George, you wrote something about this for the French in Good Religion. So maybe you are the on-staff expert on changing the Lord's Prayers. What did they do with the French translation? Well, first, oh, 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 oh. what do they want to change? They want to change the phrase, lead us not into temptation. The, they want to change that. In France, they've already gone ahead and changed that to incorporate, let us not be tempted. Hmm. That's how it reads in French. In other words, they introduce this verb, let. Um, now, the problem is that the Lord's Prayer 
comes from the words of Jesus, which are taken from the, the, from, the, from the Bible. It's in Greek. And there's the official Latin version. Now, both the Greek and the Latin are translated with no hint whatsoever of let. It's lead, the English translation of lead us not into temptation is the translation. It's what Jesus said according to the scriptures. Francis and some of the liberal bishops in the Catholic Church believe that Jesus wasn't as clear as he could be. And we're going to help Jesus by sort of nudging the Lord's Prayer a bit to make sure that everybody understands what we want them to understand. Hmm. Okay, well, as I said in the beginning, this is the Episcopal Church 101. Um, this is what you'd see in the Church of England. You'd see in the liberal churches... Uh, around Europe. Um, the, uh, we don't understand it that well anymore. We used to have a really good teaching on it. So we're just going to change the definition of the words. And uh, did I don't want to get into the theology of it all because it's, it's a good half hour topic. But is this the right way forward? No, because what they're doing is they're changing the way people worship and by do and in the words that they're using for worship, they're changing the doctrine of the church. Well, so first off, well, this is a back, they haven't done the theological groundwork to say why they can do this. But second, the problem for the Catholic Church is that it's a Catholic meaning universal church. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the set official text is in Latin, and they're now allowing local bishops' conferences to translate it according to their own likes. That's the, not Catholic. The, What's happening is that the French Lord's Prayer means something different than the English, which means something different from the Spanish. The Vatican used to have a central office which coordinated all this and said, no, yes, no, yes. Francis, in his fight with traditionalists, has broken that up. And so now you know, you'll know you have a Catholic Church that, pre that prays in different, not only different languages, but it's praying different things, but it's calling it the same prayer. It was the famous Charles Benison, Bishop of uh, Pennsylvania, who once coined the phrase, we wrote the Bible, we can change the Bible. How is this any different? Uh, Benison is shorter. Uh. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> I, I, don't see no, a big, I don't see a big difference between this and what the Episcopal Church has been doing for 60 years. We don't understand it. We don't like what it teaches. We will change it. Well, the Episcopal Church. The Episcopal Th that's Church. not Benison, right? Oh, no, no, no. That, <laughs> it's actually my wife because she has to go to a ladies' lunch. Wow. Well. And she's reminding me that she needs to go to a ladies' lunch. Well, that's good. Well, so, well, well, she can wait a minute. This is important. People well, want to know that, about Pope Francis. Well, I'm not a Catholic, and so I don't have a dog in this fight. However, the. Uh, Episcopal process has been about finding ways to justify innovations. Mm -hmm. And the first was the uh, uh, women's orders, and then prayer book reform, and then human sexuality. And the majority, the political majority, always acted first and then thought, sought to find ways to support what they did afterwards, sometimes successfully, sometimes not so successfully. Um, we're still... Uh, trying to figure out why gay marriage can be even be a can even be marriage mm -hmm. even though the church has allowed some diocese to go ahead and do it the catholic church is not that on that precipice if you no. will but it's the same way of thinking the same way of viewing the world of seeing man as trying to make god um conform to man's image, uh, to man's needs, rather than conforming man to God's image and God's needs for us. Yeah, I think this story is going to further develop. Now, what often happens, and this is since day one, is something that Pope Francis said will make the press. And then in a week, it's been changed by the Vatican, who said, no, no, he didn't mean that. So I, I would be interested to see how this uh, develops as a story. Uh, three people sent me the, the article this morning. It's been developing over the week. I don't know. I got stuff all over here. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to talk about. Uh, the next thing we need to talk about, George, and this is on Facebook only. 
It's not in the real world, but we need to talk about it. It's the civil war within the ACNA. Now, I speak of this because Bishop Eicher penned a piece uh, on his understanding of the Holy Orders Task Force and what it was designed to do and how it would uh, proceed in that piece we put on Anglican Inc. And uh, Bishop Duncan, retired Archbishop of the ACNA, uh, put a response to that piece, said, mostly right, but this is my understanding and these are the words I use to uh, the task force and this is the the orders I set forward. It's a little different, but George, it's a lot the same. I don't see the civil war that Facebook sees. Say, uh, Satan is a lion. The enemy is a lion prowling about seeking yeah. to devour. Mm -hmm. The ACNA has never been healthier. Mm -hmm. It's never been stronger. And of course, Satan is going to try to destroy it by sowing internal dissension when there really is no basis for it. If you read Bishop Eicher's it was his address to his diocesan convention. He outlined the history of the Holy Orders Task Force, and then he offered his opinion about what the proper outcome should be. But Bishop, and then that elicited a tremendous response of comments and Facebook posts, many of them quite nasty, of people who don't believe the way I believe, writing. Yeah. are going to go to hell sort of thing <laughs> or you know, you're a false priest you're this or that just nasty stuff and then bishop duncan wrote a piece and that has elicited comments equally vociferous and there's not a civil war between bishop duncan and Iker because they're both right no they, the they, civil <laughs> war is between the trolls on the internet who are demanding conformity to their particular worldview because God has given them holy revelation that Bishop Duncan and Bishop Iker don't possess. They know better. Yeah. And uh, it's just unfortunate because this, it, when there's no news, a void is going to be formed. It's Christmas. Maybe it's the time of year we get dumb stories out of Time magazine about did Jesus was really Jesus born in Bethlehem. You know, yeah, or, this is on par with that. Yeah, Mary and was raped. Were, and, you know, see, yeah. If you want, you have two choices if you want to be told what the right answers are and how to think. You become a Catholic or you become an Episcopalian. If you're an Episcopalian, and I can speak as an Episcopalian, uh, they, you know, the hierarchy brooks no uh, dissent. Just as Jack Eicher and Bob Duncan. Uh, well, now, that's, that's, that's the big difference here. This is the ACNA. Duncan is not going to try and kick Eicher out for a difference. Iker is not going to try and kick Duncan out, nor the people who support Duncan, nor the people who support Iker. There's no war uh, of trying to uh, kick out the dissent. The Episcopal Church, as you alluded to in our first story, uh, finds innovation and then tries to find the justification. Here, they're trying to work out an issue. They know it's hard. It's not going to be easy, but they're going to do it in the Brotherhood of Fellowship except on Facebook, you know? So, and Kevin, you're absolutely right. And it's really, a, how can the ACNA expect to attract casual people who may, you know, we're in a social media world and you've got these people who, I know it's cheaper than going to see psychologists, but you shouldn't use Facebook comments as a form of therapy, of rage therapy. You know, go outside and howl at the moon if you are full of rage. Don't take it out against your fellow Christians. And we're speaking on either side. It's not just the the pro uh, women's ordination or the anti women. It's it's both sides have their their detractors, who are very verbal. And, and it's so unnecessary because it's not real news. Yeah, there is no civil war in the ACNA. But if you watched Facebook, you would have thought, oh, my Lord, we're going to split Kevin, in let, a couple let, of weeks. Let me tell you a real civil war. This is what a real civil war is, folks. We had a minor story from Scotland. A few weeks ago, we posted a story about the first women bush bishop in the Scottish Episcopal Church. And nobody really knew anything about this woman. And so some people who like women priests said, yay, wonderful. And some who dislike women priests wrote, oh, terrible, Antichrist is loose. Well... The particular diocese, Aberdeen and the Orkneys, is the one Scottish Episcopal Church that overwhelmingly rejected gay marriage. 
its former bishop was the one who led the fight against it. And they had an election and they couldn't come to a decision, so the election fell to the House of Bishops, who appointed a woman priest to be bishop. Turns out this woman priest has already performed gay marriages and is, it's like appointing Jack Eicher bishop of Newark. The Scottish Episcopal Church has, has put in a, as liberal a bishop as they've got in charge of their sole conservative diocese. So, no, no, it's more like putting... And senior clergy, and senior clergy are quitting. <laughs> it would be like putting uh, Benison in charge of Fort Worth. Yes, yes. I mean, it's that, I mean, and that's a real civil war. Yeah. Where, you, where you've where you got, uh, the, what we're seeing at the ACNA, that's not a civil war. Yeah. That's just juvenile pettiness. Yeah, and this is what we talk about, kicking out dissent. Um, if you have a conservative diocese, there's no quicker way than uh, replacing the bishop uh, to form the, the future diocese the way you want. We saw that here in America, in Colorado, um, in other places where there were good candidates, good conservative orthodox candidates who just got missed out by one or two votes, and that diocese was turned in six years. You know, that's just the way it works. Did I lose you? Oh, I made such a good point. <laughs> Kevin, how can I? I can't top that. You're right. <laughs> no, no. All right. You're well, right. Okay. You need to go make your wife happy and take her to the, the ladies' luncheon. I think we covered all our news the, uh, today. Any, uh, what you doing this week? Burying people. Uh, oh, no. Getting ready for Christmas. <laughs> Have the pageant a week from tomorrow. Yes, yeah, second week uh, of Advent. Yeah. Lots of lots of stuff. Just right. busy, busy, busy. Okay, well I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode three hundred and fifty one. Yep. Of Anglican Unscripted.